me blue. I'm here to show you advice to give on how to live. Live your life, queen. Let's start the show. Let me get up on this microphone. Get up off this mic. <laughs> and dance till you feel better. Get up off of this life and dance till you feel better. Get up off of this life and dance till you feel better. Just turn up volume on the mic. Hang on, dance till you feel better. I wish it was that easy. Are you recording? I am. <laughs> Welcome to Live Your Life Queen, everybody. I'm Jesse. Hello, that's Chelsea. Hey. And you know, sometimes you just need to start a little theme song in your life to get the positive energy flowing. <laughs> because guess what, y'all? We're in holiday season. And not everybody has one of them Hallmark Christmas movie type family situations. <laughs> I know I don't. I know Chelsea don't. I know some people in the queendom don't. So we're here for you. If you are one of those people that have one of those families enjoy it while you have it because it ain't gonna last sorry <gasps> sorry welcome to episode 187 we're spicy it's holiday time y'all it's holiday time and as much as i'd love to spread <laughs> joy and cheer you know that's just not a reality for a lot of people we're still in the middle of a pandemic people have lost a lot of family members and friends not only to this disease but to mental illness to addiction alcoholism suicide and everything so um as much as these uh holiday seasons can be happy for some people it's i would think a majority of people it's really not <laughs> so we're here with you we're here for you i'm in love with this open <laughs> i just i'm trying to be as transparent these oh, days I'm as possible it. you know because it. it's true and i don't mean to be like a debbie downer we can still laugh and joke about of it course. but like you yo like Chelsea and I tried Monday to get together to fucking have some episodes for y'all. And both of us were just like, we can't. Well, yeah, I was going to say, so just so y'all know, sorry, we took last week off. Uh, those of you who don't lit wait weekly, it doesn't <laughs> matter you. to you, Thank right? You for but supporting. for the, the few that do. The pod squad on the group chat <laughs> was nervous. Sorry. We sorry we ghosted you last week. I did see a comment. There was a comment on <laughs> Queen Instagram. Did you see it? <laughs> no. It was like, oh, I want to read it. It was something like. The, we finally put something up on Instagram that was like, we're taking a break. Yeah, so Jesse hasn't posted in how Eight many months. years, right? Okay, wait, hold on. Let's well, because we didn't want to completely leave everyone on red. But yeah, we you know we tried earlier. So the this last week post was May first. <laughs> <laughs> what month is that? Month five. So a so oh, that's a lot of months, girl. So we post again. And uh it's a relax, refresh, recharge post. And uh <laughs> who says okay, H X C T I guess it's like Hector C. Oh, okay. Hey, Hector. So there's a few comments, but this one made me chuckle. It said, totally understand heart emoji. Because you wrote like, we need a break. Take a break. Yeah. Um, although, can you give us a day notice or something? I feel like I got stood up on a first date. <laughs> I was like, oh, damn. I, I've done that a couple times. But I did not mean to do that to you, Hector. Like, yeah. I've stood people up. but We definitely didn't. We, we tried. I got to Chelsea's. The mics were set up. We were good. And we just had to sit down and, like, have a best friend vent sesh day not on a microphone so thank you for understanding in advance yeah like we literally sat down we had a plan we were going to do multiple episodes we uh -huh. had the mics on ready computer open ready to go and then it just didn't we're both happen we were crying oh, we're girl. like we can't do this today girl <laughs> So it's that's true. It. It's so true. So, so we're here now. We are very happy to be back. Yes. And, um, you know, some days you just need to take <laughs> a break. And on those days, like, it, we wouldn't have been. I mean, we would have been something on, on this thing, but we would have been. Oh, I mean, it would have been. We still are. We <laughs> Slightly. <laughs> Nothing's changed. It's only been five days. <laughs> I'm still spicy as fucking hell. But okay. what's something? What what's something like, okay, let's. You want to hear something positive I, I did do. try to something do? I do. Something like really, really positive and good. All right. So something really positive and good. Um, I don't know if it is yet, but I'm hoping that it'll pan out to be. Okay. So uh, because of how spicy my life is right now um, and my feelings inside my body and meditating and going for walks aren't working enough, um, I was like, you know what? We're going to go get healed. And I went into a place called the Native Spirit Lodge. And it was like a crystal, incense, healing stone, singing bowl kind of store. Absolutely. Which surprisingly was popping on the middle of a weekday. Why surprisingly? I don't know. I've never been in this Why store before. Why did you say surprisingly? I guess I just didn't realize how many people were into this kind of shit of like all walks of life. If it wasn't just like a bunch of like yogis like trying to live their dream that day. Like there was 
mothers and daughters and sons and fathers and grandparents and old men and young men. And and I guess I was just surprised at, A, how many people are seeking spirituality as like whatever, you know? I just, I was just blown away. I just didn't know. I just didn't know. I didn't know if people were into crystals and shit <laughs> like that. Okay, but so I will you- tell you two things. Uh-huh. I got a bunch of stones that I now sleep with under my pillow. Do you know any kind? Those I left at home, so I'll have to bring those next time I record because everything, if you've never been in a crystal store before, y'all, let me blow your mind for a second. They have all these rocks and shit, right? And they're all separated by kind and powers and all that. And they come with little, like, I have a paper right here because I brought some with me. Um, they have like little. <laughs> Her podcast technique, she just rubs the papers in front of the so mic. Y'all know. If y'all can see, she just rubs these papers in front of the so, because it, it has descriptions of like what each of these kind of stones can do for Ooh. you and how it can heal you. Okay, Have you wait. ever seen anything like this? Yeah. Can we just, <laughs> she's trying to fry. Like, it's the first time I know I'm like, She's like, Ooh. Ooh. Girl, I used to go to gem Girl, shows. Girl, you I think just, I brought up gem you shows. You're a preschool honey. teacher with me oh. that hands in a fingerprinting. You're like, This is great. And That's it's why horrible. I was like, Why are you surprised? Right. There's so many quiz girls. But okay, so. What what is your plan right here? Because I haven't seen these little pieces of paper you have. So oh. I'm like, what if we did something where you like turned them over and I picked one, or okay. and maybe quizzed you, or like, asked oh girl, you about I haven't, it? I have, honey, I'm not. But in it could be for fun. A quiz. Oh, I'm right. in finals. I have too much psychological information <laughs> in my brain. The last thing I can do is memorize what this fucking stone means. That's why I brought the paper. <laughs> so before we get into people's problems, people's what we do here on Non Live Your Life Queen. People go to the website liveyourlifequeen.com. They email us. We talk about it, but usually we shoot the shit for the first like 10, 15 minutes. So that's what this part is um so i've got a combination i got a bunch of rocks which i now keep in a sock because i didn't get a bag but i put it on my pillow it's been healing eh. but i also got bracelets and these bracelets all mean different things yes. so like I don't know. I have these pieces of paper and I have these bracelets on my okay. head, but we don't have to go through all of no, them. No, we're not going to. might take we're a long time. Okay, she has, she your probably money. has seven, six. Six, six okay. for nine dollars. It was a <laughs> Stupid. And I really tried. It's interesting because the stones I picked were more like grounding and balancing. And the bracelets I picked were a combination of grounding, aligning, and abundance. Okay, so I'm just kind of tarot card styling this. Oh, okay. Like selecting three. <laughs> okay. I don't know why. We're going to call these are the three that we're going to focus on today. This is the energy we're bringing to this show today. Oh, I love that. This is the vibe, yes. everyone. Bring okay. it in. Burn the sage. Let's do this. So the first one I chose okay. is a chakra bracelet. <gasps> Girl, check it out. I'll take it off. I'll show it to the audience. Take a look at it, everybody. <laughs> I'm going to visually describe it for you. So it looks like an old school puka shell necklace from like 2000 that everyone was rocking on their neck, but it's a bracelet on like a elastic string. And they're, the shells are all different colors. So they're the colors of the chakras. And so there's, um, I don't know what like they start and where they end, but it's like there's yellow, purple, green, see-through, blue, pink like burnt sienna and clear awesome (laughs) which are all like probably actually better than like describe them that like they actually have like they're like jade and amethyst right right, but like i'm like that's that clear one that's like purple that's that clear one right yeah uh jesse look at my kitchen you see that beaded doorway (sighs) yeah that's a chakra so if you look i see that she's got this like beaded magic moment door and from the top yellow burgundy Mm -hmm. green right it's old okay it's seen a few things okay but that's a chakra i can't see very well but that's that's a chakra beaded door and a chakra is said to level and center our universal change Mm. in a spinning dimensional vortex damn aka that shit keeps you balanced when the shit's a little wild should be spinning should be spinning (laughs) and so i put it in my kitchen door by like oh i'm gonna walk to the food hail mary full of grace and lotus with the align my ass please Oh, uh, bitch. All right. So, okay. So, we're um, aligning in a spinning universe today. I we love that. have a little bit of center. Good. That's great. All right. This next one, I'm going to spell it for you and make you pronounce okay. it. Okay. H E M A T I T E. Hematite. All Hematite. Right. One more time. Hematite. <laughs> like, stamatite. Hematite. <laughs> oh, 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 uh, stop. Hematite. <laughs> 
So we should go into crystal like <laughs> um, advertising. Okay, so this is hematite, y'all. H-E- I'm gonna spell it out one more time. H e m a t i t e. Okay, it's hematite. That's it. And then it says anti hysteria stone. That bitch. That's why I got. It. I'm like, bitch is hysterical lately. Get this anti hysteria <laughs> stone now. What color is it though? Main ingredient is steel. Oh, this little guy. If the stone is broken open, Mm -hmm. it is rust red Mm -hmm. inside. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Our ancestors thought the stone showed its broken heart. Mm -hmm. That's how I feel lately. In time, it would oxidize and become black again. Girl, you should have seen me reading this one in the crystal shop. Just like bawling. (laughs) I was like, that's me. I'm a hematite. I'm a hematite right now. (laughs) I was like... She broke it, but she gonna be stone. She gonna be stone. <laughs> it was thought the stone had become calm. Yeah. Okay. Today is believed hematite promotes an inner calm mm-hmm. and rewards those who possess it with the serenity and hidden peace mm-hmm. of steel. So that one really related to me because a lot of times I can possess outside that steel kind of front, but inside I'm dying. And so like, I want to turn that inside dying to like inside calm and like, we're good. So that's this one. It looks like almost a bullet. That is so handsome and yeah. lovely. I actually Do you want to wear that. her? No, but you, you can get me one. You can give me one. You can get me one next Cause time. Because I'm going to the shop for your ass. Native Girl, one. under your tree is going to be Native Spirit <laughs> You Lodge. better. You better. No, I hematite. really like this one. Because I also like hematite. <laughs> And it's unassuming because the hematite actually looks like beads I would, rather than like pukas. Like, because this is those, no, no Tino shade. I probably wouldn't wear those. Right. But I would probably wear this okay. in accompaniment with like something else. All right. Okay. Made you a stone. know what you want to wear her for the episode? You know what? Let's wear her for the episode. <laughs> hematite. Hematite. All right. Our final okay, one. Okay. Our we'll final crystal. Because then the next one, next episode, we can do the remaining crystals okay. if you want. Because I'm like digging this like intention all It's good. We're, we're reminding ourselves of the goodness. Yeah. All right. Last but not least. Daddy. Okay. okay last but not least, Jesse. We're okay, staying on a good train. I'm aligned you, and I'm are hematite. You here? You're I'm hematite. You hematite. I'm hematite. Okay. <laughs> I'm not hema loose. Hematite. <laughs> all right. Last one for today. Okay is the lava stones. <gasps> Girl, you're going to love this. Okay, the keep going. lava stones Ooh. are great for money and riches. Yes. Easter Island is the most remote place in the world. Mm. Yet, its ancient natives created statues facing the sea up to 82 tons. So heavy. How they move these giant statues is still unknown. Alien. Found in, <laughs> found in abundance are lava stones, mm-hmm. believed to be of ancient spirit. Mm-hmm. Even today, they are used for money. It is said they bring wealth and riches in uncountable, mm-hmm. oh shit, mm-hmm. uncountable mm-hmm. abundance. Bitch, I like that. Uncountable, uncountable abundance. Uncountable abundance. That's definitely why I got that. Uncountable and abundance. <laughs> I literally just like will spend my time like holding this bracelet and be like uncountable abundance, uncountable abundance, uncountable abundance. Uncountable. Can I tell you a mini story about this pick, so picking of this one? So um, this is like an all black um, beaded bracelet. The beads are kind of fat, circular, um, just like fully round. And they go from matte black to like shiny black to like, it looks like lava black, like a little porous. It looks like a okay. pumice stone. And this one in particular, out of the whole bunch, mm. um, a couple of the lava stone bracelets had other like little uh, trinkets, I guess you can say, um, woven out through them, like a peace sign or something like that. Oh, like a charm. Like charm, a charm, a charm. Thank yeah. you. So this one is the only one in the bunch to have a crown on it. And I was like, oh my God, live your life queen. And I was like, this is meant to be mine. Uncountable abundance or <laughs> whatever, you know, like this is my, abundance. take That's it. Right. Like, yes, girl, th- that was meant to be my. It literally has a crown on it, y'all. It is the perfect queen beads. You know what? Because abundance a- is happening, girl. Amen. And that's a perfect way to end our three it is. Okay, go get a segment yeah. of aligning and hermetite. And Love Stone Queen Abundance. Is it Hermitite? Hematite? There you go. <laughs> I'm like, who's a harmy? Who's a harm? Who's a harm? <laughs> Tripping on harm. <laughs> Oh, that's so that's great. that. I Thank like you that. for coming along on our crystal journey. Um, next episode, I'm looking forward to sharing the other ones that I got as well. Too legit. Uh, too, too legit, legit to quit. Hey, hey. <laughs> 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 All 
All right. So that's that. So, um, yeah, I like how we turned around the mentality before getting into other people's problems, which is important. Every now and then I get a little bit fucked up in the head because the people in my life. Every now and then I get a little bit anxious and I really don't know fucking why. Every now and then I try to get a little right in my head, but people make it so hard. Every now and then I try to let the stress out, but then it keeps coming back in my yard. Every now and then I fall up, turn around. Bright eyes are fucking every now and then I fall apart. But I need this podcast tonight. I fucking need this podcast forever. All right. All right. So. That's we that. really just ended on the same beat there, too. That wasn't an edit. I wonder how many times they listen to this and think we, like, edit and cut Stop. shit. We really don't. Like, Jesse and I have this I weird have timing. Skills. We have, But we, you and I have a t- edit timing with each other. Yeah, when we, like, just know enough is enough. <laughs> We're like, and done. Move and on. And moving on. All right. <clears throat> Speaking of. All right. So everyone that wrote in today, thank you. We appreciate you. And um, I hope your your writings align with our intentions today. And if they don't, that's okay. We'll f- go gonna, with the I'm flow. Gonna, you know what? I'm going to leave these three. We're going to hematite. I'm going to leave these three out. Chakra, hematite, and lava. Mm. Okay. Right. Oh, hang on. Let me take out my hair tie because my hair is too hematite. Oh, Lord. Oh, oh. let me unbutton my pants after Thanksgiving. My pants are too hematite. <laughs> I can't. You guys. <laughs> hematite. All right. All righty. What? Um... Oh, my God. I guess. It was the last person we had, Duncan? Was that the last last? I believe so. Okay, There's so been so much I mental think. trauma. Well, I, I don't, don't know. know. We have been through so <laughs> much shit. Oh, I, I can't know. wait till the world knows. Never mind. And the world's going to know my name. My right. name is Jesse Butterfugo. <laughs> Jesse Butterfugo. That's uh, Alexander Hamilton. I still. Isn't it wild? I have not. I know it's a big oh, deal. Wow. I know. I have not. I have Les Mis issues with it. And so mm. I, can't, I can't, it's like I can't go into it. I, go, like, I wouldn't go into Les Mis again. Mm. <laughs> Me neither, girl. I wouldn't. I'm like, you know what? Y'all can keep that. Y'all can yeah, keep go, that fan you know, team. I'm going to go see something else. <laughs> Y'all, <laughs> you can keep that dream on a cloud, bitch. Like, I'm good. I don't need it. I don't uh, need so, the revolution. Anyways, I hear it's good, though. Hamilton, yeah. sorry. Okay, anywho. This first email. Okay. Oh, wait, Jesse. What? Oh. We're so out of Jesse, course. Jesse, are you ready <laughs> for the first email? <laughs> Most yeah. excellent. Yeah. Okay. I'm just trying to find my vibration. Feel the vibration. <laughs> you got to sleep. Oh, yeah. All right. I'm apparently in karaoke mode. First name. Okay. So this one, first email, is from somebody. I'm pretty sure we know them. Okay. Home for the holidays. Pretty sure we love them. Their name is Simon. Okay. Oh, but (laughs) Simon, we love Simon. But remember, we served Simon. Because he came for your, your, the way in which you um, pronounce, like, Spanish words. Remember? Remember I remember, Simon? I remember Simon, Simon like bought a t-shirt and we clowned him. Oh, then we were like, Simon, <laughs> like, sorry, we love Simon, you. we love you. But it was like a day. Simon keeps seems to come around when we're having dates. We're having a good day there. Like, yeah, right, yeah, let's yeah. see. Hopefully. All right, Simon, how you doing, honey? I think he's from Germany. Mm, we'll find out. So the subject says, hi, queen. What's up, Simon? Spelled H-I-G-H. Oh, hey, girl. <laughs> Message. Hello, darlings. What's up, Simon? It's Simon. <laughs> I'm coming at you on a Monday at 3.33 a.m. Angel number. I've been seeing 3.33 and 3.13 this whole week. With story time. So grab some snacks and yes. lean back. Ooh, yes. you know, let's start with the story. Okay. Thank you, Simon. Show. You we knew the you, vibe. Simon. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was me did sipping hear, a Diet Coke. Did y'all hear that sound? That was me <laughs> sipping a Diet Coke. <laughs> Out of a can. Yeah, That's I know. A, they didn't have a bottle. Girl, that was one hell of a slurp. I know. I did it extra for the audience. No, I love it. Okay. <laughs> so, was this Simon? We're back to Simon. So, yeah. if you know me at all, 
you know that I'm pretty much the most sober and clean person out there. Mm. I don't drink. I don't smoke, do drugs. None of that. Wow. Not even coffee or energy drinks. Wow, Simon. However, that doesn't mean that I'm not somewhat fascinated by the topic, especially illegal drugs, which at this point in time generally includes weed here in Germany. Germany, Mm -hmm. as far as I know. Mm -hmm. There might be exceptions, though. Anyway, I've always been way too scared to try anything until this past weekend. Oh, boy. Me and a good friend took edibles. Oh, boy. (laughs) That's the first thing you're going to do? That's the first thing you're going to come out the gate taking edibles? Oh, boy. Me and a good friend took edibles, one and a half cookie each. We went out into How the city. How much milligrams We went out into the city. Girl, that's when you need to have like Simon. a sleepover. Who is this friend? Simon. He had proposed this to me multiple times before, and I only eventually agreed to do it because to my understanding, weed is pretty much the safest drug there is, and I kind of wanted to finally try mm. something within that whole field. I mean, it can be, yes, but not unless you, if you have like a psychotic disorder or one in which you have like a schizophrenic kind of diagnosis or things like that, weed is not your friend. It only makes your shit worse, just FYI. Yeah, um, just so I could get a whole grasp on what I was potentially missing out on. The city I mean, was, do you? That's how people do drugs, right? I guess. The city was packed with people, and we had a good time, but I didn't feel like any effects were kicking in. No. This is the problem with edibles. No. You don't feel like it is until you smacked <laughs> in the head. <laughs> oh, until they did. Right, Simon? I couldn't keep myself together. <laughs> I was laughing at everything, yeah. being probably way too loud, and constantly <laughs> stating how high I was. I asked my friend. <laughs> Sweet baby Simon. You're so cute. <laughs> I asked my friend if we were going to go look for the dude's car that I wrote my first email about. Uh, you can go find a car. Got ghosted on from a guy from Grinder. You know the drama. I actually think he moved to a different city. So whatever. Simon, you trying to go find a man's car in Germany? Honey. Simon. You, you high. That weed is real good. <laughs> and we ran into a chick I know from uni and at least two police officers who were smiling at us as far as I can remember. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. So the police officers are like, this fool is high. Live your life, sir. <laughs> I also, I know Germany and Amsterdam. That's not the same thing. Two different thing, places. But they're so close to each other, right? That it, Or not? Uh, far? Yes and no. Uh, I mean, you could get there within right, a day, okay. but they're not like Best neighboring thing. cities, <laughs> I don't think. I don't know. Well, one's a country. That's Anyways, what I mean. when we got back to a, my friend's place, things took a turn. Mm-mm. I can't really describe it. It felt like I was drifting away from reality. I remember pretty much everything, but not in detail. I was thinking in concepts that don't exist in the real world. Yeah, man. If that makes any sense totally, at all. Totally, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> I can't put myself That's back. That's called weed, <laughs> man. <laughs> I can't put myself back in those thought processes, but there were, (laughs) I'm laughing, sorry, but there were also some hints of panic in this whole ass mess. Oh yeah, honey, that's going to be there at least for another 20 years until you (laughs) build up your tolerance. Particularly because I accidentally swallowed a mint and I started to worry that it actually went into my lungs. (laughs) I don't know. Don't ask. I feel <laughs> I feel like instinctively I did a quite good job at anchoring myself in the moment mm-hmm. so that I didn't drift off completely. Staring at the same pictures on the wall over and over again and repeating mantras in my mind like, I am here. I am going to be okay. Okay, Count Dracula. <laughs> I don't know why I did that accent. You like the Count from Sesame Street. <laughs> One. One, two edibles. I am here. Uh, but overall, it was quite dramatic, and I don't know if I would ever do it again. This all happened on Saturday night, and I still fell out of pretty much the whole day Sunday, too. Now, my questions. <clears throat> do you think, do y'all think this was within the realm of a normal reaction for a first time edible consumer? Yeah, honey. Or am I just really sensitive and should probably never touch any kind of drug again? Also, can you share maybe your best and worst drug experience? Oh, wow. Lots of love to y'all and the kitty. Oh, and P.S. Mary unfollowed me on Instagram for no apparent reason. Oh, Have a great day. Calling you out, Mary T. (laughs) What? Mary. Oh, she cleaned out her friend list. All right, so... Wow. Well, one, no, I don't think your experience was out of the realm of being high on edibles, honey. It sounded like a hoot. 
And nothing bad happened, which was great. We love that. You know, uh-huh. you didn't lose your mind completely. No. no arrest, jails, institutions, or hospital happened. So bravo. You're a great first-time drug user. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, that said, drugs um, are different for everybody. Um, they've evolved over time since I started doing them and whatnot. In terms of, like, I look back to my first-time experiences and all that anxiety about it. Like, I, you know, I was a teenager smoking weed for the first time. I think one of the first times I smoked weed, I was about 13 or 14. Um, and uh, didn't really mess with edibles all that much until college and, like, brownies. And, like, that, that was – I would say that was one of my worst and best times of, of that since you asked Simon – um, I'll never forget it. It was like a look big lacrosse game and like, oh, like everyone was there and it was like, you know, everyone was planning on like the girls had a game in the beginning in the earlier in the day like and a the championship. Yeah. Game? And the guys had a game. It was like alumni weekend. It was something. Okay. And so like the guys had a game later in the afternoon. So then once we finished our game, we went back, got changed and like picked up our weed brownies that we made and then watched the boys game eating brownies but like Simon didn't feel it at first and so I was like whatever and this was like before like weed started getting like pre-packaged and sold as edible so like we made it ourselves so there's no way to tell how much is in it all that stuff and there's probably 10 to 15 of us at this point so there's a lot of brownies and uh all that and so you know we ate it and I'm not feeling it I'm not feeling it I'm not feeling it I'm not feeling it. I'm eating more I'm eating more and then all of a sudden Choo choo, here come the train. And it knocked me on my ass. And it was kind of like the way Simon described it. Like everything made me laugh hysterically. Like, and it was one of those, I could have been walking one mile an hour and it felt like I was walking a hundred miles an hour. Like space and time continuum. Forget it. I'm on planet Mars. I remember at the end of the guys game, like, you know how in in sporting events, at least in high school and college or or stuff, like at the end, the teams line up and then like high five, like good game, good game, good game and like pass each other. And so when the two teams of 25 each are passing each other and I'm looking at it, it looked like mind fuck girl. It was like a magic eye poster, but like. (laughs) Times a billion. It looked like a giant caterpillar because all the legs were moving, but the people were moving and it was so long. And I was just like, girl, shit faced. Eventually wound up heading back to my dorm to change for the night to try to go out with everybody and like didn't make it back to my dorm. Wound up halfway from my the field back to my dorm, passing out on this like lawn in front of like the biology building. <laughs> and like in the middle of the day, just fell asleep. I guess it was like my, my legs were tired. Like, I just felt like my body like, was 100,000 pounds. Now. Right. So I was like, I'm, I'm just going. Go. Yeah. And the so, bushes look good. Right. right. And so just like passed out, apparently. Thank God nothing happened to me and I was not like necessarily assaulted or anything. That could have been problematic, but I right. just woke up. <laughs> it was dark and I was like, oh shit, I guess I missed the party. <laughs> like, <laughs> I missed everything. Slept through it, wound up back in my dorm, but it was like hours later, right. hours later. And I'm just surprised I wasn't arrested or taken to a hospital. Like, it's just a passed out girl on the lawn. This was before, like, homeless people in the neighborhood was like a parent. You know, like, it was just, oh, girl. So that was my experience with that one. Nice. But luckily, and not luckily, but when it comes to drugs and doing drugs, um, I was always hyper aware of if I get found out or caught, this is going to become a news story or this is going to be bad for my family. So I was always very high (laughs) um, on guard with my drug use. So like even if I would go batshit crazy, it would be in an environment where I knew no one was going to take a picture of me, exploit me, sell it, or things like that. I rarely got so fucked up. I've never not been hospitalized, knock on wood. I've never had to have my stomach pumped. I've never had an OD um, because I just never let myself get there. Um, I did. I went. To, I took classes on what people's limits are. Like I, I took actually classes on drugs and alcohol so I could be a smart drug and alcohol user because <laughs> right. I knew I liked it too much. I didn't know that it was because I liked escaping my reality because it was so stressful. I just knew I liked to party. Right. So like and because of the amount of PTSD and anxiety and worry I had me drinking five beers just brought me to normal. 
other people drinking five beers makes them fucking on planet Mars and shit face and unable to do anything. And so there was a different combination for me personally. But when I did ecstasy, we took, we, our friends bought the kit online to test it, to make sure there wasn't anything in it that was going to harm us. Like, you know, so like we did, we were smart about it. Um, I think if more people did that today, especially with Coke and the amount of fentanyl that it takes to kill somebody, like it's, well, that wasn't like that when I was doing drugs, you know, when I was a Coke queen, it was maybe cut with baking soda. Right. It wasn't shit that was like, oh, all of a sudden now extra and going to kill me for my 18 lines that I did last night. Sure, I I went to sleep praying to God to wake up in the morning. (laughs) Plenty of times when my heart's racing out of me from all the coke I did. But um, I think growing up from early 2000s, late 90s, early 2000s, 2010 is when I was really in my drugs and drinking and, and party phase and stuff like that. And so it was a little bit safer, I think, in those times too. But that's because I also made it safer. Right. As much as I was irresponsible, I was as responsibly irresponsible as I could be, if that made any sense. Mm-hmm. Um, we talked about it, how we have yeah. like rules. It's like, you you need to know them so you know how to curve them. Right. It right. Was, it was that. Exactly. And I never fucked around with heroin. I never fucked around with anything that's going to, yeah. like, inject in my veins. I at least had enough wherewithal the few times I did crystal meth to be like, oh, no, this is going to take me if I don't stop. And I stopped. Right. And I never did that. So I'm very thankful for that. Um, so I don't know, it's a journey and, and drugs are an interesting part of that journey, but I think it's important to say they are dangerous. If you don't know who you are or where you're coming from before embarking on drug journeys, it might prove to be problematic for you and or kill you. Um, and drugs these days are fucking different. I mean, children are literally dying the first time they try one pill and that terrifies me. Mm -hmm. Terrifies me because of what's in it these days. So, Simon, if you don't want to do that again, don't do it again. Basically, if you have, you know, I, I'm oh I, to be, and I don't want to be the person to be like, oh, you're you're being lame, not doing drugs. Now that shit is dangerous now, y'all. And and addiction rates are ridiculous. And the drugs that they make today are not the drugs they made 15 years ago, and are not the drugs they made 30 or 60 years ago. Uh, they are highly addictive. And people are susceptible to addiction as well. And I think, too, with our world, and it's so stressful. And it's so, so many people are experiencing levels of depression and anxiety where they weren't before. And a lot of people turn to self-medication for that right. because they don't know tricks like meditation or going for a walk or healthier alternatives to, to lower that anxiety level. So they turn to weed, they turn to pills, they turn to this, but then they get hooked and then they're fucked. And then your mind changes and you're in a fucking weird ass place. And then you're really fucked because getting help is going to be even harder. So just... Just be aware of that. And I strongly recommend doing your research. If you are one that wants to party and wants to do drugs and wants to live that life, go ahead. But don't be an asshole about it. Research it. Mm-hmm. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. That's it. All right. Because I don't believe in abstinence <laughs> either. Because that's unrealistic for me. In terms of, I, I believe in abstinence in a, in a way, but preaching abstinence and just say is that. Away. Yeah, no. That's never no, going to work. Educate. Educate yourself. Educate your friends. There's classes out there, you know, there's there's ways in which you can do things safely. Um, and so, you know, be smart about it. That's it. You know what I think? I think in the bead world, the bead world. in the bead world, <laughs> Simon would get the chakra beads because the chakra beads level you and center you in a spinning dimensional vortex. Ooh. And I feel like Simon felt as though he might have been in a spinning div- dimensional vortex when he was that high. And maybe a little chakra center, you know? Mm. Um, his mantras. <clears throat> yeah, his mantras. Uh, very, very quickly, Simon, I get you with the whole staying away from drugs and then going to them and then being like, whoa, this is a trip. Um, I didn't do weed at all until I was 25. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't drink until I was legal to drink. Um, so I'm very, <clears throat> I've done Coke at this point. I've done mushrooms at this point, but other than that, like I haven't done anything else. Like I'm pretty chill. I've seen people in my life had severe addictions to things like Oxycontin, heroin. I've seen people overdose. I've seen people die. Um, I've seen a lot of that. And I think early on getting that, um, exposure kept me away from it. Cause I was like, yeah, I don't need to be a coked out 15 year old. Like I just don't need to. Um, and I was around literally coked out 15 year olds. Um, so I just personally took a lot of action to keep myself away. So when I did turn 25 and I made choices and now I was in a very controlling relationship that kept me away from exploring drugs as well that I wanted mm-hmm. to explore drugs and he wouldn't let me in like your earlier 20s. Yeah, he mm-hmm. literally wouldn't let me. It was like I was going to be 
defying him in such a way that like it would have ended our relationship so I never did Mm. any drugs I just drank and I drank excessively because that's what I did you Mm -hmm. know and so then 25 I tried weed and I had a lot of conflicting feelings about it because I had been this girl that was like anti-drugs I and not like where I shamed other people for doing no, that. No, because you were me, hanging out with us while we were doing it. Sure. You just didn't want to do it. But for me, it was like, nah, I'm good. I'm yeah. good. Always. Like, And then I allowed myself to try it. And I remember getting high the first time with you, Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't, you know, my high experience has changed in the last eight. I'm glad I wait. <clears throat> my point is, <laughs> I'm glad I waited. I'm glad I started later in my 20s. I felt like I had once I allowed myself to start smoking weed and I consider myself like basically a stoner now. I mean, it's a daily it's daily use for me now. Um, I feel like I can regulate it because I was older when I started and I know what I'm using it for. I'm using it so that I don't go to a bottle of wine because Mm -hmm. I sometimes I get anxiety and I need to suppress whatever. And then I don't want to feel drunk. So Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know. Simon, I don't know if you're doing alcohol. I don't know what you're doing. He I says pretty much nothing. Nothing. I think. Yeah. And I was that person um, a little bit, but that can also limit you. So I hear what you're saying, Jay, about like staying away from the drugs. I don't think Simon's exploring things like because he would be I like. I don't me. think he's got a, much addiction going on. That's what I say, and I don't think he's doing ecstasy, coke. He's not right. going. He's smoking weed right. and like doing edibles which is not once. even smoking weed one and time he, right last so monday like, and two like months ago him out <laughs> and he's like ah. so i would say hey simon may, if you enjoyed it at all if it gave you any sort of relief try it again maybe in a different way edibles is not the way to go <laughs> uh i would suggest not to do that um but not to put pressure on yourself to continue doing it either for me it helped me and that was not anything in the first 25 years of my life that anybody presented as like, Chelsea, this could help you. Mm-hmm. And the first 25 years of my life, I saw people using weed for escapism. I saw right. people using weed just to get high and be lazy. I saw people using weed to have access to other drugs. Mm-hmm. Because like you said, back in the day, we didn't have weed shops. In order to get weed, you did have to go to a dealer who mm-hmm. most of the time was also dealing coke, heroin, pushing meth. And they would say things to you like, you want a couple rocks, you want to try this like that was not I didn't even want to have those sentences said yeah. to me because I knew if somebody said you want to try this bu- you want to do this bump real quick I probably would have done it mm-hmm. at 16 mm-hmm. because I wouldn't so I just kept myself away from that mm-hmm. anyways okay so you got a chakra beads yes, yes. yes align yourself hopefully that was helpful information for you to do some of your own soul searching and your own you know yeah. everybody reacts to substances differently keep that in mind I think it's also important to note that connections to family history is huge I'm learning that in school right now um and that and if you have alcoholism or addiction in your family line the chances of you having that within you is highly highly greater so just keep that in mind too Boom. okay we're moving on ready yes number two on the chakra list next one is from somebody else we know and somebody else we love and their name is fashionista lewis oh Everyone's home for the holidays. All my chosen family. Thanks, Fashionista Lewis. What's up? I'm glad you showed up for me this holiday season. The subject is uh, with a bunch of H's. Oh, great. So just, yeah. He's message. feeling it too. He needs his chakras aligned. Ladies, What's so up? sorry to rant on a Tuesday of all days, <laughs> but I need to. Do it, babe. Do it. Story time. P.S. I'm writing this at 1.30 a.m. Okay. I wonder, people really be writing this in the middle of the night. I love it. I kind of love that. That we're there like middle of the night solace. Like you're just alone and you're like lit. Or maybe, yeah, I like yeah. it. Write us in the middle of the night, you just need some help and relief. Yeah. We got you. You're not alone. As you know, I study fashion at college, which That's I have right. been invited back to complete my final oh, year. Oh, good. So, that wasn't yay, a me. thing yet. Like last time he wrote in, he's like, I think I'll be invited next year, but I'm not sure because my teacher says, <laughs> didn't, he, didn't his teacher say something like, oh, like you need to try your hands again. are a little wonky, oh, yeah, honey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Yeah. We're like, oh yeah, you really actually maybe new, do need to do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, so got invited. So yay. Um, I got got in mind and holla at me, boo. <laughs> I'm here to show you a stitch fix on the suit kit. Live your life, fashionista, Louis. Okay. Uh, double loop stitch on China silk. Yeah, the thing is, you can't do a double loop stitch on a China silk. It'll pucker. And you didn't just get this in because I saw it in last May's Vogue. Uh, oh, 
my God, oh my God, you guys. It's opening for I, uh, All right, okay. Uh, but because of Miss Corona, we were in lockdown for the better half of the past two years. So unfortunately, I wasn't able to learn that much about the sewing machine <laughs> <laughs> and how to work them. All right, actually learning, right? Mm-hmm. I learned. I learned the basics, like how to thread the machine and how to attach the bobbin pin. Which is a lot harder than one may think. Way harder than one may think. Way if harder. If one has never had to thread a sewing machine, bitch, you would not, you would not oh, throw shade at some old ladies who right. can do it. <laughs> it's, it's complicated. <laughs> I and the bobbin? Don't even get started on thread the And then bobbin. if it spins funny, forget oh, it. Okay. I also learned a few, again. With the teeth. Uh-huh. Learned a few stitches. Um... By the way, I just want to say, because you know how I am. Fashionista Lewis uses the learnt here, which is funny to me. And then on the last one, Germany said y'all. So I'm like, are you really from Germany? You write in y'all <laughs> in your email. That's not y'all. right. Okay. Um, I also learned a few stitches, but they were on industrial sewing machines, mm. not regular ones. So I am currently on my summer break. So I decided to teach myself. Good for you. They got so many YouTube videos. My great aunt gave me her sewing machine in all caps. Bitch. And then like. Eight or nine exclamation points. <laughs> okay. Why is this shit so difficult? Like, why on God's gay earth made this so hard? Like, there are so many different modes, levers, switches, yeah. and buttons. Like, bitch, just stitch. I don't care about embroidery. I know how to embroider. I don't need you to teach me. I've been looking <laughs> online for days and ways to work it, but it's so irritating. Vent, baby, vent. Jesse, I remember you on your old podcast, saying you would make the costumes for your plays. I'd try. So I'm wondering if you use the sewing machine and if you could give me some tips. Like, I don't have time for this. I have a part-time job, which is slowly turning into a full-time job, preparing for the new school year and trying to maintain my natural state of being skinny, pretty, and iconic. <laughs> By the way, have either of you seen the Cruella movie? She's such a fashion icon. Okay, bye now. Sorry, this is all over the place. Like I said, it's 1.30 a.m. <laughs> Uh, Welcome back, baby. Thank you for bringing me some joy today. I greatly appreciate you, Fashionista Lewis. Um, I find it funny that someone's like in fashion school is asking me for fashion tips like that on how to sew. Because like, girl, if that shit didn't work for me, I hot glued it. Are you? And they've been in school for two years. Yeah, girl. You know how to use a you know machine. Use machine you know? Like Jesse said, you too, baby. Um, I will. Yeah, and I will say if this is a sewing machine from his great aunt. How old is this great aunt? That sounds like 1901 to it's me. It's like a typewriter. Right. So maybe it's about selling that piece of machinery and getting a more modern one that will set you up for success to not waste all your time trying to find the answers for this old, outdated kind of technology that if it's going to help you with school, get yourself the tools you need to succeed and not drive yourself batshit with this old ass ancient fucking word processor. I don't know things about sewing machines. <laughs> That's number one. Number two, get yourself a hot glue gun. Just glue it. Number three, get yourself a staple gun. Just staple. I've, I've stapled many a costumes <clears throat> together too. Um, absolutely. Yeah. Uh -huh. So to be honest, the sewing machines um, came in handy last year. I made a lot of masks from home. Actually, DIY masks out of old T-shirts. Uh, so that healthy. But I do not know how to use my sewing machine. Like I can thread it. And I could go, but like, if you ask me to cross stitch or T stitch or fucking add a hemp girl, no, like I just know how to do the basic straight. press mm -hmm. straight, mm -hmm. press the button, call it a day. I never yeah. look up a pattern. I don't know how to do it right. Yeah. I just like, maybe this will work. Mm -hmm. And I literally hot glue gun everything before I got the sewing machine. I'm fully aware that you hot glue gun everything. <laughs> like I made a caterpillar oh, wait, with eight on. arms I know. and a hot glue I girl and felt. <laughs> And that shit was slapped. Honestly, we could put on a whole show with a hot glue gun. But Fashionista Lewis is turning this in for a grade. So, so yeah. you can't do so, that. Right? You can't be hot glue in. No. I, my suggestion? Unless. New sewing machine. Also, you could create. You know what, Fashionista? Let's go away from stitching. Mm. How about you create a whole new world in the fashion industry? Clothes only held together with either safety pins or mm -hmm. hot glue. Velcro. Duct tape. Mm -hmm. Velcro, great option. Great medium. Listen, to use. and you could go online and get the command strips mm, with the Velcro and just have them stick sponsor it on. you. And then you create a whole new world of clothes. Uh huh. You're welcome, Fashionista Lewis. You're welcome. Oh wait, hold on. I wanted to give him beads too. Okay. So Fashionista, I think gets hematite because hematite's anti-hysteria stone. Oh, and he was crazy. a little hysteric in there. Hysteric. Yeah. Uh huh. 
So it's, it, it promotes inner peace. Let's find your calm. And rewards you use with those who possess it with the serenity and the hidden peace I like of that. steel. So you know what, fashionista? Goose Fraba. <laughs> Goose Fraba, find your inner peace on that steel machine you're using. How about that? How about You're going to be okay, honey. <clears throat> All right. Last but not least. Yes. This one is from M. M, the letter? Just the letter. Not just E-M? One, just one M. M? What do you think it stands for? Mm. You think it's Mary T being like, um, I have followed, un- I unfollowed Paul Simon. Simon. <laughs> What's that? Cr- creak? Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Um, the subject is finding strength. Ooh. Okay. Message. Hey, guys. What's up, M? I don't know how to start my story, so I'll jump. Recently, I started going to therapy again, and it was a huge mental barricade I've been fighting for the past fighting with for the past every day of my life bravo that's a big struggle growing up my father wasn't around and my mom was and still is a mentally unsound person i spent a lot of time as a kid wishing she was different but came to learn very quick that the world doesn't work that way no matter how many times you cry yourself to sleep to make a long story short trigger warning her fiance at the time had molested me when I was two, mm. and even though she left him, it became very clear to me as I grew older that she blamed me. Mm. I understand now that this cr- that this is a sick mentality, and she is cr- a crazy woman, but growing up in this, r- in this really messed with me. She never let me hang out with anyone outside of our place where she would listen to me closely, and the only explanation she would ever give was that it was because she couldn't trust the fathers of my friends. Mm. While this seemingly made sense considering what had happened in the past, it was all bullshit. A blatant cover-up for the real shit that was going on at home. Almost every man she brought into our place after this all went down. Was a disgusting pervert. Okay, so this is written funny, so it's like hard for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost every man she brought into our place after all this went down was a disgusting pervert. And Mm. she very clearly knew this because she constantly berated me to be a to be decent even though i was a young girl and the only clothes i wore were the ones she bought and approved of oh so she'd be like be decent around the house around these grown-ass men right to not tempt them with your teenage daughter your preteen daughter and even blaming it on a Uh, Uh, Uh two-year-old oh what oh okay I'll never forget the time i was 14 and my aunt had brought me a tank top and shorts because we lived in the goddamn desert Both clothing items were still very modest, and she took one look at me and made me return it all because I was, quote, wearing skimpy clothing. Oh, wow. This was coming from the woman who wore the lowest cut shirt, skinny jeans, high heels, and hadn't left the house without makeup in 10 years. She toned her look down as she got older, but the only reason being was because her sister publicly called her out and shamed her for dressing like that in front of her husband. Mm. Husband. Husband. Childhood felt like a goddamn Lifetime movie. Mm. Jesse, I feel you. There you go. I don't know. <laughs> Actually, yes, yeah. I was like, uh, Jessie, Sounds about right. Uh, yeah. Still, she never left the house without putting on a full face of makeup. That's not an exaggeration. It did not matter if she was in labor or if my siblings or I got hurt. She would not leave the house even to get to the hospital without makeup on her face. Mm. Don't get me wrong. I'm all for a confident queen. And even though my mother likes to believe she is, I witnessed firsthand she is the farthest thing from that. Yeah. She was not only verbally abusive, but physically as well. When I was seven, I can't remember why we were fighting, but she snapped. She was screaming at me, backed me into a closet, and kicked me in the mouth. Oh, shit. At seven? She panicked when she saw the blood and rushed me to get cleaned up before school, telling me that this is why I shouldn't piss her off and not to tell anyone because I would be taken away from her. Yeah. Damn. Damn. Even though I was scared, I denied the whole thing when it was brought in and questioned at school. Oh, yeah, because the teacher is a mandated reporter, so they see that. <clears throat> what happened to your face, honey? Oh, I fell down. Mm-hmm. After that moment, the abuse became a little more subtle, so it wasn't as obvious to the teachers around. Her excuses always included the fact that she had it worse growing up in another country since child abuse wasn't a crime in hers, but would complain about here in America, you can't do that without going to jail. I'm ex- how about how yeah. about taking it out? Oh, I'm gonna go to jail if I beat my kid. How about I'm gonna ruin my fucking kid's mental health if I beat my kid? Where's that conversation, mom? I'm extremely thankful to the heavens. I was born here and not there. And regardless of her fucked up past, even though I can understand why she is the way she is, I can't have her in my life anymore. Yeah, dude. It's a big painful pill to swallow and I think it's stuck in my throat, but it's a reality I've had to eventually accept. Mm -hmm. I got so used to her hitting me, tearing me down and any trace of self-esteem I had and just being so uncomfortable and scared around her for whatever boyfriends at the time 
it's been hard for me to function as an adult. Yeah. The cycle of witnessing unhealthy relationships led me to some dark, scary situations myself, and I thank whatever is up there for giving me the strength to get out of it. Still, though, I struggle with emotions and anxiety that come mm. along with all this. Either way, I already feel my life shifting after just a short time of cutting her out of it. My mom used to have so much control over me. I didn't realize this environment was detrimentally toxic yeah, right? until I was finally able to move away from her and find my own strength. Isn't that something? When you're out of the vortex, you don't realize the amount of bullshit and crap that you actually put up with on a second by second basis having someone that toxic in your life, especially when it's a parent. Woo! I I'm glad you're out the vortex, baby. Right. I specifically Don't get sucked back in. Don't get sucked back in. <laughs> I specifically recollect <clears throat> the time you, Jesse, spoke about how you learn through therapy that you're going through the grieving stages of losing a loved one, regardless mm -hmm. of the fact that your father is still alive. Yeah, it's even kind of harder sometimes because they are alive. I heard the same thing last week from my own session, and it put a lot of my own experiences into perspective. My question is where are you right now with this process? <laughs> and how long did it take you to get to the point where you real where you realized enough was enough with your dad? Mm. Thank you for listening, Queens. I appreciate y'all with my whole heart. Mm. Have a beautiful day. Get it, M. First of all, M, bravo. I'm very proud of you. Whenever I hear someone's tale or journey of choosing themselves over the toxicity that is their family, um, is really inspiring to me because I kind of came to that revelation about my own life on my own. And, and since I've been more vocal about it, I've been hearing other people's stories of it too. And it makes me feel not so alone. And that's fucking awesome. Um, two things came up. One, I highly suggest you go listen to Barbara Streisand, Donna Summer duet. Enough is enough. It will give you the strength you need to keep on maintaining the boundaries with your mother. Wait, can you give me just a tiny bit of it? Oh, girl. Well, first of all, the opening is like this beautiful duet of the, like, I'm going to skip because the audience is going to get bored, but it's gorgeous. But when it gets to the chorus, it's like, enough is enough is enough. I can't go on. I, I can't can't go on no more. No, enough, enough is, is enough. enough is enough. I want you out. I want you out that door now. And it's just all that shit. Like, no, right. enough is enough. Right. It's raining. It's pouring. My love life is boring me to tears after all these years. No sunshine, no moonlight, no stardust, no chance of romance. We don't stand a chair. It's, oh, it's really good. <laughs> I'd always dream I'd find a perfect lover. That's Barbara. But he turned out to be like every other man mm. I loved. I loved. And it. Mm. Mm -mm. Don't mm. do it. Um, and then the second part of that journey, where was I going with that? Oh, there was a chick, and I took a screen grab of it because it really meant a lot to me the other day. Uh, her name is, I think, Netta. Let me see. N let me. Uh, Nedra Tawab, N-E-D-R-A-T-A-W-W-A-B. Um, I think she's like some sort of therapist, something I follow her on Instagram. But she has a lot actually about parental shit and that. And um, I wanted to read this because I mean, this is why I took the screenshot of it. I didn't know why I did it the other day, but this is why. I'm going to read this to you, Em. Sometimes broken relationships cannot be mended. Because mending them would mean accepting less than you deserve, not having your needs met or being inauthentic to get along. Forcing broken relationships can be a betrayal of self. And like something about that stuck with me of like, you know, I don't need to force this broken relationship because we share the same blood. Like enough is enough. And when you get to that realization that holy shit man you holy shit mom holy shit dad whoever it is holy shit person boyfriend sister brother cousin whatever you really did that and to some degree I let it happen but I'm smarter I've done the work and I'm not tolerating that anymore plain and simple my dad the other day just emailed me I love you I'm sorry love dad I bet you are Little, it's just a little too late. Like it's okay. Mm -hmm. And I can't stop him from sending those kinds of things and just replying back. Please stop sending me these things is not going to work. So I just take it with a fucking grain of salt these days. Yes, it riled me up a little bit, but sorry. 
Enough is enough. Is enough. Like straight up. <clears throat> yeah. So like I continue. Uh, I, I, I want to just say, keep going on this journey. Yes, you're grieving the loss of a parent. You're also grieving the loss of a hypothetical parent that you wish you had. You're grieving the loss of any sort of parent being there for you. And it sucks. It absolutely sucks, especially not having a dad, too, on top of that. And then your mom fucking sucks. Right. I mean, it's it's a shitty situation. So I am proud of you for being in therapy. I am proud of you for coming to these realizations that you are better than you've been treated in the past. And I'm also proud that you're able to look at your mom and have some empathy for her and her situation and not just come at her with all this hate this bitch did this to me this like she said you know she comes from this environment and this country and I gotta be like whatever you're doing with your therapist keep doing it (laughs) you're doing great honey for real um because having a fucked up parent is really hard but once you come out of the light Mm -hmm. it's like a hurtful because you're like holy shit how could you do that to me my whole life what but then it's like I'm in charge now and no. And no. Yep. I agree. And I don't feel bad that you feel bad now because someone's trying to hold you accountable for your actions all of a sudden. No. <clears throat> no. Right. Right. And there's a couple things with M that I just want to touch on and then we'll be done with this. And what? that's one of the things is the <clears throat> being a female raised by a female who judges body against yours and mm. things like that. Man, mm. that's a rough that's rough and when you feel like you can't um be free in your expression of yourself for some reason because your expression of yourself is somehow in competition with your own mother mm. which is that's the that's the problem it's not like baby cover up your boobies of guys are gonna look at it you know it's like don't show your body to my man yeah. that's like what your mama yeah. was saying to you at five and seven and eight and then she's and like she's purposely sexualizing herself and going out and making sure her presentation so when you live in a mm. world and you're raised by a person who is more concerned with their who, way they look how they are who cares about them who wants to fuck them because see that was your mama's big concern right making sure the men had interest in her not the baby girl that looked good. And she can guise that in protection and she should. And there is no way a grown man should be looking at a 14 year old in a tank top and shorts, but it happens. Mm -hmm. And I get angry at the mother who tells the daughter to put on clothes. Right. I don't get angry at the daughter. I get angry at the man who's allowed in the house to have this idea in his mind that he could stick his dick in Mm -hmm. your daughter. And you as a mother are allowing those visuals to happen in front of you in such a way that you feel threatened Mm -hmm. by your own fucking child. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Em. So I want to fully acknowledge that with you. And that's something you got to work through in therapy hard Mm -hmm. because when your mother is a sexual being and then suppresses your sexuality because it's threatening to hers, it can really strangle you. Mm -hmm. So figure that out because that's going to be – and that causes resentment too Mm -hmm. and it causes you having – did you hear that ringing? A little cringle, clinkle lang down the Girl, street. Who the hell ringing? Good. And somebody ringing on the truth is all don't that is, honey. On the okay, truth. M. All right, so M, that's I'm gonna give you a little bit of love on that. Okay, I love you, and you are fully, fully worth everything that your body communicates and your heart and your everything that you are as a physical being. Don't carry those burdens that mm-hmm. your mama did to you, because that's what I heard in this email. Yeah. When when you're still stuck on certain comments and things, like you're stuck there. So and you're good jesse said all the thing about graciousness with your mama so that's good be nice to her because mm-hmm. she got her own problems but and take ma- care of you and maintain these boundaries i stopped talking to my dad november of 2019 and not because he hasn't tried to get back into my life right i stopped it and i've maintained it and tell me why i'm thriving mm-hmm. i cut out the common denominator right i'm thriving right cutting that toxicity out of my life has allowed me to heal yeah has allowed me to try new things has given me new self-confidence in areas i never thought oh i'm gonna share with the queendom right now i'm gonna go get a doctorate degree Bitch. that was not on my radar two years ago i know i'm proud of you i didn't think i had enough in me i didn't think i was smart enough i didn't think i could do it because of all the bullshit my daddy put me through you know what i mean mm-hmm. so i'm thriving yeah. i cut it it's been one of the hardest things and it wasn't easy at first it definitely wasn't easy at first, but what, two years later now? Almost three? You get it. I Actually, love you. this I'm sorry time. email. You're like, oh. Okay. Yeah, you are sorry. Yeah, I bet you are. You fucked up. Kind of sorry. That's not my fault. And it's not my responsibility. No. 
you had a lot of chances to do other things. It, it irritates me when people think they can say sorry and they think <laughs> that that's it. Nah, uh-uh, there's more than that. Anyways, we're going to give M this last stones. It's okay. not, ne- you know, not necessarily in line, but you know what? If M got a lot of money, if M got... <laughs> she got abundance. If M got the lava stones and M got <laughs> uncountable abundance, honey... <laughs> You ain't worried about your mama no more. That's right. right. Okay, you get that uncountable abundance, honey, and you live your thrived life, and you make sure that the children you bring into this world, you don't do that stuff to. And you make sure that the impact you leave is a better impact than the mother, the impact your mother left on you. And you just take these things, and you don't take them as downwards for you, but power towards you and your future. Mm Mm-hmm. And we're here for you, baby. And we love you. And this is a long ass episode. It is, but that's okay. Okay, we good? Yeah, we good. Do you want to say anything else? Yeah. Thanks, everyone, for writing in. We greatly appreciate you. Good luck on your journey. Thanks again in advance for being gracious with us as we also, too, Chelsea and I, navigate through our personal bullshit. But just know that we love you so much. And um, we're in this together. And it's very um, important to have a community around you of people that do love you and do support you. And sometimes that doesn't mean it's family. And that's okay, too. And sometimes it does mean it's family. And that's cool, too. Yeah. But it doesn't have to be. And if you're blessed with a family like that, we love you for it. And if you don't have a family like that, we're here for you. Amen. Welcome to I the kingdom. I don't got family like that. So if y'all want to be my friend. That's it. Okay. That's it. We'll send you the P.O. box so you can send your presents to Chelsea. <laughs> send me your fucking beads. <laughs> All right. Let's get out of here. All right. Bye. Bye. Got a problem. Holla at me, boo.